Hey, 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 it's W5HRO, everyone. I uh, I have a quick update on this AO lady. I'm, uh, I went to uh, do all the mods to it and everything, and they see I have the new plate choke in it. See that? And I have the uh, the new capacitors. What I had to do on this was that the, the these new capacitor leads weren't quite long enough, so I used the old capacitor leads, and I just took some bus wire, and I wrapped them all around it, you know, and I soldered it good, and I put a little piece of... Uh, uh, I think that's some RG58 or RG8X coax uh, the PVC jacket. And I just kind of glued that over so just for a sealer, just, you know. I didn't have to do that, but I, just, I didn't want my finger in there and it might catch something sharp. And, you know, it's easy. It's better that way. Uh, you can see I put the new blue uh, .01 caps in there. They're kind of overkill, but these will never go bad. And uh, when I was in here working around, they had the little circuit that's for the... Uh, the ALC, there's a brown wire that goes to this and I actually put it right right there for the time being. Uh, when I put these new caps in here, this it would not fit, this thing would not go back in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill another hole. They had, what they did was, they had this lug on the screw that, that goes to the rubber foot on this one corner of this 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 amplifier, which I you know they were just trying to I guess prevent from drilling extra holes or something to make it easier, but that's kind of a bad deal. So I'm going to put another hole right there and I'm going to remount this thing, but because I tried to get that back in there with those bigger caps and this one blue cap right here, it was kind of in the way and it kind of broke one of the uh, little germanium diodes on this thing, but it's it's no biggie. I looked at it on the uh, parts list and uh, I actually have some that are better. So I'm gonna replace the two caps on this. And they, this uh, this is a 27 picofarad cap that goes to the input. You know, the uh, when you when you transmit in this thing, it, there's a little piece of coax that goes up to this. And it, uh, you know, it uh, goes into the amp and it divides off into to this capacitor lead. This is a 27 picofarad. It's kind of a flimsy little lead. And I, I bit this thing around so many times I was afraid it was going to break off. So I'm going to put a new 27 uh, picofarad cap. Plus, that's the critical one because that's the one that uh, if that decreases in value or increases, it'll drastically increase or decrease the, the RF voltage going the ALC circuit. So, uh I'll, uh, well, it goes into the diodes, but still, I still I want to make sure I get the right value on that. So uh, that one's probably drifted some anyway. So I've got I've I've got one downstairs. It's got a it's it's same. It's 27 picofarad, same 500 volts. As a matter of fact, I think it's a 600 volt. It's a little bit better. It's got heavier lead, so I'm going to change that. And I have the diodes right here, and these are better than what they use. They use like little one in one in 34 A's or something. Well, I have some. These are actually better. These are uh. 1 in 41, 48. These are higher voltage, higher current, so these will be better anyway. So I'll put two of those in its place. And, uh, oh, last time on this, uh, I said this uh, resistor in here was a 47K. No, I don't know what I was thinking. That'd be yellow for the first pan. It was green. They Somebody put a 50K in here. I guess they bumped it up or they had to replace it. And they put this 50K. This is a two water. And it, the resistor seems to be fine. I'm not even going to bother with it because I... Uh, I measured it with the ohm meter and it came out exactly 50 ohms. I guess identical. So I just said, you know, it's right on the money. So obviously it's never gotten too hot. So I'll just leave it in there. It's not 47K to 50K. It's, it's not going to make a bit of difference. Uh, now you can see I did add the zener here. What I did was I added this. There was already an extra hole here they'd never used. So I put another terminal strip here and I pulled the, the green the green filament center con, in the uh, center tap wire that's got the yellow stripe on it from over here, and I moved it over here. You know if you can see the zener or not. I uh, that's how I had to kind of put it in there. I heat sh I put a, I put a lug, and I put uh, heat shrink tubing on the bottom part of it, and and over the lug and everything. And I just added an ex extra heavy wire over to here just to kind of run it back over to here again. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, it's it's not heat sink. I couldn't figure out how I was going to get, there was really not enough room to put a heat sink on this. So I decided for now, let's see what happens. I don't think with a 50K go on the ground, it's going to hurt that Zener. The, my guess is a Miratron never used a heat sink on that diode anyway. They just used a, used a 10 watt. It probably doesn't get very hot at all because it's such a low voltage, uh, you know, transformer on that, on that winding. What is what, five volts? And the center tap, I don't think it's a problem. So uh, what I did was I did measure it. Let me put my meter on it with, in, in diode mode. And uh, what I'll do is, is I'll just keep my eye on it. See, right, it just beeped 
0.6 volts drop. You know, these, these lower voltage zeners, a 7.5 volt zener, you'll get, you'll see like a normal voltage drop. It's the higher voltage zeners where you can't see that sometimes. It'll give you some weird reading. But uh, I checked it and it looks like it's good. So what I'll do is, when I eventually go to replace these caps, also, I could not, I could not find a place in here right now to, to put the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what do you call the, uh, the uh, glitch resistor, the two I was going to put in parallel. I'm going to wait until I go to pull this board out and replace these caps, then I'll do it. So I'll just chance it now without the glitch resistor. I could add a fuse in here just to be safe, but I don't think it's going to be a problem the way I run this thing. But when I go to change these caps, I'm probably going to do it this summer. When I pull this board out, then I'll figure out, because I'll have room and I'll figure out where I'm going to put the glitch resistor in there. Right now, I just couldn't figure out. I didn't want to have to move this transformer all the way and do that. But uh, So that's what I'll wait on. But uh, when I go to replace those, when I pull this cover off again, when I go to replace those, I'll check this zener to see if it's still good. And chances are it's still going to be okay. But if it was a short, like I said, it's not going to hurt anything because the case isn't grounded. It's not stud mounted to ground, so it's fine. So that should be okay. So I had the zener in there, and I replaced the choke and these caps and these caps down here. And that cap down there and I cleaned I cleaned all the socket and everything now I went to look at this fan because it's making noise and I cleaned it up a little bit but I started looking I took an exacto knife and I tried to carefully cut the little the, the, the label off so I could see those things you I think these were designed where you cannot get these things apart so I searched online this particular model this Torin was taken over by a company called Nidec probably back in the mid to late 80s. It was it, probably the late 80s, maybe early 90s. I'm guessing probably mid to late 80s. They stopped making this amp in 83, and sometime shortly after that, this company was bought out by a company called NIDEC, and they're over in China now, which is like, that's where everything comes from, right? So I got to looking online. This particular model, what it is, it's a, well, I, I kind of cut the, the model number off, but I, I found the data sheet. You can see where NIDEC took them over, and the newer ones have red labels on them. And I found a picture on the internet of an AL80A, and it has the NIDEC fan in it with the red label. So that's kind of how I know that it was sometime in the uh, probably the late 80s, mid to late 80s, when they, this company took them over. And the one that, the one that was in here, this one that, I, that I'm replacing, was an A33, it was, it was an A30390. And it, uh, the CFM, the airflow factor was 68. It's a 115 volt fan. And uh, current is, that current's okay. And the, this fan speed runs at 2,050 RPM. That fan, that particular model, the only thing I could find online was some old pull, some old used ones that people had pulled out of equipment, which is the exact same Torin. I said, no, I'm not going that route. Why would I put an old one back in here? So I found the one, I found plenty of uh, A30426s. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. It's the A3018s. Uh, yeah, the A3018s. And they're, the ones I found are dash 10s. But see, the C, look, at the, look how much more the airflow factor is, the CFMs. It's 105 compared to 68. That's going to give this thing some more pressure inside. I think it'll be okay. Hopefully it won't be overkill. And it runs at uh, 3,200 RPM. So it's going to run a little faster and provide more airflow, which this amp could use anyway. The problem is this fan was pretty loud. It may be a little bit louder, but maybe because it's new. So I found some brand new old stocks. They have not made, they, they quit making these fans a long time ago. They haven't probably made these things since the early 90s or mid 90s. They went out of production, but there's plenty of new old stock ones for sale online. They're coming from China, of course, because that's where this company is. That's where they're manufactured. But there's new old stock, and they're just laying around. So I found the uh, that one there, the 301, uh, the 30108, and it, they say dash 10 on them. And I don't know what that means, and I assume it's probably the same fan. But it's the same for the, the uh, it's the same number. It's the TA450, so it's the same size fan. So it'll, I'm assuming it also has the metal housing. It'd actually be better if it was plastic, because it'd make the amp less heavier. You know, this damn fan's pretty heavy, so it adds the overall weight of this thing. But I'm, it's probably the same metal fan, would be my guess, but we'll see. But I, but I found them on eBay. 
uh, like for twenty five dollars each, and they're new old stock, and they're they're in they're sealed up in a you know uh, what do you call the plastic shrink wrap or whatever. They're brand new fans, so I grabbed a couple of them just so I have an extra one because you never know. Someday I may drag home an AL eighty A. You never know. So I thought it'd be it wouldn't. They were so cheap. I thought well that's that's pretty good. Now the ones that MFJ sell for the newer amps, those fans will not work in these. It, the fan's a lot smaller, so I, I was wrong about that. I stated that MFJ sells them for a hundred bucks. They sell fans for a hundred bucks, but they're way smaller than this. They're for the newer models, and they will not fit in this amplifier or the AL80A. They won't. So anyway, uh, one last thing. Uh, so, so so basically, that's kind of what I'm waiting on. I ordered the fans. I checked the shipping status of them here today, and they just they just came into the U.S. from China. They made it through import customs, so they're going to get transferred to you know USPS. So I I should have them sometime by the end of next week. So that's kind of what the holdup is. I've still got this thing down because I, I don't want to put this old fan on there and then have to take it back off to replace it. I'm just going to wait and do it all at once. So, uh, but one thing I noticed, remember I was telling you last, the last time I did the video on this, that, uh, the 10 meter position, I could add the relay here in the coil and put a switch on the back. I wouldn't have to do that. I got to looking at this thing. And if you look at this rotary switch, the position is on there where this, this back part of the wafer on the back part of the switch, this is what changes the relays and the red wire is connected for that 10 meter position. And there's the, this, the contact is there. And what it is, is that they have the stop set on this, this rotary switch to where it doesn't go. I can't go to that last position right. And if I would, and if I would, and all I got to do is pull this knob off and this panel off and change the where that stop is on that. You heard, probably heard my meter time out. It's beeping. It saves the battery. But all I got to do is make a switch down this red wire and the other contact is here for the, uh, for, the, for this wire over here. See, it's right, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's kind of hard to see with the phone here, but it's right there. And the position, it just, the, the, the switch won't switch to it because the little metal tab, they've got it set to where you, it won't click one more position. So all I've got to do is take the front of this switch, this panel off of this knob, and uh, I can change, I can move that, that final stop tab, and I can make it go one more position. And then all I'd have to do is run the, 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 the heavy, like this uh, stock wire from there. Or I think that the 10 meter tap is probably right there. I'm guessing it's probably the third tap over from the 15 meter tap. That's probably where it is. It's probably, so I could probably sod it right there to make it work on 10 meters properly. And then all I got to do is find a relay and it wouldn't require a switch on back because that red wire that's going down to it is there. So if I make this switch go the one more position like it will, if I, if I, if I move that stop tab, you can, you can mod it, you can change the switches. So obviously that's what they did on the export models. They had it where that, that stop tab was, it allowed it to go one more position. And they may have had the face plate that had the extra, the extra numbers on the uh, silk screen to where it would show 10. I don't know. But it, it, this this switch will in fact click one over one more, and every the switch is wired, and the red wire. See, look, it's right there. See where it is? It's going right up to the bottom of that board to control that final relay. So that's all I got to do is move the tab on that switch to make it work on ten, and then add the wire from there to over here to the coil, and it's done. After I find the relay and add the coil in here, so that's a piece of cake. So I, I'm kind of glad I noticed that. I was wrong about it wouldn't do it. It will. It's Everything is there except the relay and the coil and the extra piece of stock wire to go from there up over to this coil. So it is it is modifiable. This is that's what I'm saying. They they made these things export with tin on them. So and they they made them all the same. They just didn't they they just put the stop the stop before it got there and didn't add the two components here or the extra wire. That's all it needs. So it's like those three things. Bang! It's done piece of cake. Oh, and I did, I did find the 16 meter lamps are a little bit heavier with leads and everything. I found them at Hobby Lobby and those are coming too. I should have them sometime by the end of, the, end of, end of this next week. It's by the way, it's Saturday now. So, uh, probably by next, by next Friday, I'll have everything. So, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put the 16 volt lights. I'm going to replace these 
and I'll probably just uh, add a series resistor in here with, and I'll just put heat shrink over it to limit the current to get the voltage down so they last a long time. So I definitely, I cannot stand it when the meter light doesn't work. It doesn't, it looks, it doesn't look good because the light doesn't come on. The meter doesn't light up. It's just because the bulbs are burnt out. So uh, I do have the lights coming. I got like a pack of 10 of them. So I'll have plenty of extra ones to put in here if I need to, if they ever go bad. But they already have the, the but they have the leads on them, but they look like heavier lamps. They're actually, they're, they're the, you know, they might be just a little bit bigger physically in size. They're for train sets. They're for trains. 16 volts for train sets from Hobby Lobby. So they do have the replacement lights with the leads on the end of the bulb. It's just, you know, I just don't know how much bigger they are than these. I, I measured them and I looked at the, the, the uh, dimensions on the web and they may just be just a little bit bigger than these. But that's not a problem. I can, retro, I can retrofit those things in here just fine. Piece of cake. Worst comes the worst, a little bit of hot glue, right? <laughs> I won't do that. I can make them fit without doing that. But uh, I just kind of wanted to give you an update on this and what I had to deal with on this fan. And I, I thought, well, I tried to take this thing apart because this has a this has a sleeve bearing, and the one I ordered has a sleeve bearing. If I, I'm not sure how this comes apart. I think these things were designed. If I punch those things out, I don't know if it. it I'd probably ruin it, and I, I thought, well, let me just not damage this in case I couldn't find the fan. I would just squirt some WD-40 down through this other way. The problem is when you go to turn it on, it's going to start smoking until that WD-40 burns off. Probably set off the smoke alarms in the house. So, uh, But I got a new fan coming, the exact same size with the company that took Torrin over. And it's, it's a little bit higher RPM with more airflow, so hopefully that'll be even better than this one. And I've got an extra one coming, too. I have two of them, so I'll have a backup. So that's all I have for now, and uh, I'll uh, turn it back over to the, uh, what do you call, the uh, the people watching all the other videos. <laughs> 73s, this is W5HRO.